Uh, how you doing? You right? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I gather you had some questions and stuff. I do. Annoying journalist, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good. Amazing. So I think the first, it's not a really creative question, but it has to be asked. Um, your latest single, Desire. Mm. Um, what was kind of the writing process and how did the song come about? Sure. Um, well, there, there are four writers on that track, um, which is the which was not in kind of intentional at all. It was just I was working on some ideas with my guitar player, um, Guy, and uh, we uh, have been back and forth to Brooklyn in the last few months working with a producer over there. And uh, he was in London for a week and we got a couple of days together. It was, it was the end of last year that it got written. And it ended up where he brought a friend with him and there ended up being four of us in a room. And we had this kind of little bit of a sort of chord progression and we had a few melodies. A lot of the time I just sort of have like melodies and right. uh, in my voice notes and then some chords and that's it. So like it was kind of born out of just messing with that idea for a day. And then we we didn't kind of dive in for anything too deep lyrically. We just wanted to try. We just we just wanted to have a, something that felt kind of um, what's the word? Uh, something that was kind of suggestive and had a bit of sort of sensuality about it because that's just how the idea felt. Right. So that, that was kind of it. There wasn't much, um, there wasn't much thinking. It just kind of happened, yeah. which, I, which I, is not always the case. So yeah. That sounds cool. So um, how much time do you spend with the song before you feel like it's good to release it? Do you know, there's, that's, that's a great question because there's no real set sort of do a set time on that kind of thing it's a lot yeah. I, I just try and go on gut feeling um i mean sometimes or maybe well maybe more often than not i'll try and play them live for a while and sort of learn get to get to grips get to know how to sing it because yeah. uh, you know you write something and then you've got to track a demo and you don't really know what you're doing because it's just, the, the whole thing just came to you so um yeah um i i tend to try and try and live with them for maybe a few weeks or whatever and try and get them played and then really like as soon as there's just a, a, a feeling in the recording process that continues to keep you excited you know you don't sort of there comes a time for me when I'm I stop thinking about what could be added and what could be enhanced and I just am happy yeah and every time I, I listen I get the same kind of feeling and reaction so yeah that's my sort of uh my cut off point yeah, yeah that works yeah. Um, and when you write and record, do you try to have a routine, kind of like most people have a nine to five job, which I right, guess right, could be yeah, talking yeah. music or just any creative job, really? Yeah, yeah. Like um, you. Yeah, there, I guess there is a routine to a degree. Um, you know, we'll do a certain amount of, of instruments recording first, um, just in order to have a blueprint for something to work to. And then then it tends to get interesting. Then it then we start kind of, you know, my band and I or whomever I'm working with at the time, we we're kind of the long the, what takes longer is throwing all the kind of random ideas around and the ex experimentation yeah. but i'll try and do like a kind of a blueprint call it like a like a drum drum and a bass guitar and maybe one guitar and from there be able to just get you know get creative with it all yeah, yeah. so that's my kind of rough process that tends to be the same every time that's pretty good yeah because you kind of feel comfortable in a routine and it helps yeah. you to kind of stay on track, I guess, right? Completely, yeah. It's, it, it, I think I'm glad to have a couple of dogs back here. Sorry, I'll just move. <laughs> um, I think it's the postman who came. Let me just put it here. Um, they, they're, very, they're very good at being guard dogs, although they're, they're not. Um, yeah, as I was saying, um, it's uh, yeah, it's good to have like a kind of basis, and I yeah, I try and sort of apply that to everything that I do. Um, but you never, I, I like, I also like the idea that you never really know how it's going to turn out. There's always a sense of mystery. But yes, if I can just like put some grounding on it, then I will try every time. Yeah. Sure. So uh, coming back to Desire, you have mm. just shared a teaser clip for the music video. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so how important are visuals to you? Do you feel like they make, I guess, the music experience even better? Yeah, yeah uh, it, it's always interested me, like all the kind of music that I've loved growing up and and stuff that has influenced, you know, the kind of processes that I have has, has kind of delved in visual stuff as well. And I, I, yeah, I, I like the idea that like you can kind of create 
a sort of all encompassing feeling of who you are every time something new releases. So yeah, I'm, given the opportunity, I'll always jump on trying to do something visual. Um, I've got like a guy who's like a mainstay photographer who he's not a videographer. He didn't put the video together, but like we, we, we've worked on most singles that I've released up to now. He's been the sort of principal photographer for the, for creating the artwork. And we like, you know, it's cool. He's a good friend and we bounce off each other. And I'm always kind of interested to find, um, constant collaborators like i'm trying to, i'm always trying to build the team so to speak like it's cool to meet new people all the time but like you you start to develop trusting somebody's intuition yeah. and you kind of feel like you're going to give them an idea and they'll get it across to you so like we did the photos for this this single and it was nothing majorly um cutting edge right. we're just like messing with different you know lighting and whatever and um and that kind of helped me to start to devise the idea for the video. And I wanted it to feel kind of like, you know, kind of moody and kind of darker. And yeah, like, I, I don't know. In my head, I've got like this kind of linking thing, but I couldn't describe yeah. you what it is. Yeah. But, it kind of, um, but just to try and um, every time I do a single, I try and like everything I put around it, I, I like to try and get it to feel as if it's one. Yeah. So that's always that's always the hope. So hopefully when people see the video, they'll think that too. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, um, I'm assuming you're a big music fan yourself. Oh yeah. And you probably know these moments when you've kind of realized how pretty amazing music really is, like when it hits you sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's one of the most powerful things there is. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. how do those moments differ for you between being an artist and being a music fan? If they differ even. It's that, that's a great question actually, because like it's fine because the, the differentiation is something that I barely ever consider. I just sort of have this general generalized kind of way that I just take in music it's um yeah that's a, that's a that's a great question I guess like I, I could I, one way I could describe it maybe would be like being at a if I go and see a show somebody that I really love yeah and you get all those kind of you know ethereal magical kind of shiver down the arm feelings yeah. that you that you you know I, I want to be able to try and get that kind of high out of what I do Mm -hmm. but at the same time when I go to a show I hope I hope that happens as well and it's very hard to articulate what exactly what that feeling is but it's um I don't know if that differentiates like I I, I, I maybe I would say that there isn't much that differentiates it for me I just love everything about it yeah that's a perfect it, answer, really. in a way I wish that it could be separate but like it's just not it's just yeah, yeah it just ends up feeling like one one thing yeah, absolutely cool. As so we're talking about special moments, you've got yeah. your first German headline tour coming yeah. up. So and, uh, yeah. So that's <laughs> I'm I'm so excited. I can't wait. It's um I'm nervous and excited because like we've spent the last few years like opening for other acts and getting to come to Germany. I'd never been to Germany before. I was doing support tours. Mm. I've been to holiday, but never never to uh, to perform. And it's just been yeah. so it's been so good. Like I I would genuinely say that like I've had better experiences so far like playing in germany compared to playing mm -hmm. over here like i just people seem to resonate like they're kind of they've yeah, been lucky to get in front of audiences with other groups that i've been opening for where the, the music isn't crazy different so you, there's like a sort of appetite for it for what i've been doing even though it's obviously not my, been my own my own show but you yeah. try and do everything you can to uh to sell yourself to the to, to the um people that are watching you but like uh yeah it's been really cool. Like it, it just feels very welcoming, and I'm really glad to be to be doing the first run of headline dates I've ever done in in, in Germany. Like I can't wait. It's um, yeah. I just want I just want to do it now. I just like it's, I mean, what is it? It's it's in about a month's time now, but it feels like it's ages away still. Oh yeah, I bet. Like yeah. the anticipation is oh too much, right? <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. I just want to get stuck in. I mean, we're doing. We're, doing, we're just doing five consecutive dates and it's probably just going to fly by like that as soon as I'm in it. But like, yeah, right now it's just a great sense of um, just wanting to get stuck in and give people even more of a flavor of what I've been doing. Like bringing some like new songs to my set list and things that are, you know, more recently released. And we're, we're, we're going to do it in a kind of semi-acoustic kind of fashion. So it won't be like a full band thing, but it won't be just me. It'll be kind of, um, yeah. So hopefully dynamically that'll be, that'll be cool for people. That sounds so good. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
you know, music and especially touring gives you so many new memories to have. So I have a question that's kind of inspired by a song somewhere in a memory. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, trying to be funny and sneaky and all that. No, that's great. That's great. <laughs> um, so if you could relive a moment you have kind of gotten to through music, which one would you pick? A moment I've gotten to through music. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, oh, that's a, that's a great. Your questions are awesome. That's um <laughs> well, I mean, be, being like operating as 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 an independent artist, even before my my label deal, like y you kind of get like managing everything like myself and looking after so much of my creative and administrative life, like having to look out for myself at all angles. Yeah. is an interesting kind of like i i never really necessarily set out to do that but it just became the way and i suppose and, and, and all of those kind of decisions some of which i had no idea would be good or the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do yeah. kind of led me on a path to where i am now and it's sort of it's it's so easy to look back on stuff but like it's a pretty crazy route that it was to take and I suppose it's, that's not necessarily one specific memory, but I do, I consider the path that's gotten me to where I am now a lot. Yeah. And in a weird way, I suppose it is like building up one kind of long memory of, because I sort of look at it in the last, say, three years or so. I was in like other bands and stuff, and then I made a decision to, to sort of have a hack at it myself, and I started holding songs back and keeping songs for myself and all that yeah. kind of thing. So, um, yeah, like my, my kind of pathway via being like independent and then finding my way to, to people that want to help me is a kind of big lasting memory that I think won't ever really fade. Like I'll always think yeah. about the, the last kind of two to three years of just establishing myself as, as a solo artist. Um, and maybe that will get smaller as time goes by. That memory might get smaller because I'm always, you know, I get increasingly busier and thinking about tomorrow rather than yesterday, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's one way I could I could give it to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I hope like that, that I hope that helps. <laughs> Absolutely, it's really good. <laughs> All right. Um. So, as a musician, you've been doing this for a while. And um, how do you evolve? You know, do you observe what other musicians do, or do you just riff around and play with your band to get better, or just to change it up? A bit of everything. I think um, I'm always listening to to you know, especially the music that you know, musicians that I admire that you know will always be releasing and the rest of it like i'm always i try to keep a radar on you know what i like that is con that's constant like rather than just going and putting on a rolling stones record which i would love to do every day but like i listen to you know stuff that's now that is i mean you know you know you're never trying to copy anything but you're always you're always i think you're always sort of subliminally taking influence on something you're borrowing yeah. or you're like kind of you hear something or you you look at something and you kind of it just energizes you absolutely so i'm uh yeah i'm always doing that and i'm kind of um i try not to kind of think about it too much i try to just let it happen like yeah. the thick apps like spotify and, and youtube and stuff are great because you just find yourself looking anyway and then occasionally they'll just just throw something at you which they know is you by that by that point and you yeah you kind of kind of helps to sort of guide me yeah i'm and i'm looking at like i'm looking at the way people are like utilizing things like social media tools and that side of it because it's quite like i mean we have like with, with the people that i work with for promotion like you know i'm lucky to have a team of people that come up with cool ideas but i'm also always just generally interested in myself as well yeah and um yeah so there's always like an awareness cool rather than just thinking about like just writing songs i'm always kind of thinking how can i continue to enhance what i do you know yeah absolutely. yeah amazing so we have a final question that we like to ask everyone okay. and it's that we have built a house in the sand. So okay. if you could build a house anywhere in the world, where would you build it? If I could build a house anywhere in the world, okay, wow. Yeah. Um, anywhere in the world. Do you know what? Like there is a, there's a record by an artist called Ray LaMontagne. Yeah. Who, uh, and it's his first record, it's his trouble, it's his first album. And um, every time I put that record on, I'm transported to, uh, just just a family holiday I took years and years and years ago in southern Spain down on the um it was called the Costa de la Luz it's like the coast of light and um it was just I, I don't know why but like it was just the most like the scenery was so stunning and it was just down on this beautiful coastline 
I think if I, I, I would probably like to build something there. Like okay. I don't really, I, I, it's not like a family memory or anything like that. It's not like a, it's not like it reminds me of my family. I see my family all the time, but like it's just, it was such an innocent time before, like, yeah, you know, before I was working like so so much on on my life, yeah. and it's just this kind of innocent little memory. And every time I hear that that record, it makes me think about it. And you just asking me that then just put that record on my head again for some reason. So I have to. So I guess I'll, I'll. I have to use that. I have to use that as an example. Yeah. I mean, that just shows how powerful music is. That you kind it of really is. It that. Really, it's visceral. It's nuts. It's like it, it. It can. It takes you like. It's. It's as visual as it is audible, which just yeah. blows my mind. You know. It's yeah. Crazy, but it's so I, hope, I hope that kind of helps you out. I hope that helps you out. Honestly, that's a brilliant uh, answer to this question. Probably. Thank you. One of the best ones we've heard today. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> well, I do my best. <laughs> Amazing. So thank you so much for no, having us. That was very really enjoyable. Thanks for your time. I hope it all works out all good. Absolutely. And enjoy your tour next month. Thank sure. you very much. See you around. You take care. Yeah. See you thank later. You. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.